Did your family have any special customs that were somehow cultural? I'm trying to understand. You're so eloquent in your autobiography about uh, that you were the one who wanted to pursue your Arabic roots. And I'm trying to understand if, one if the there was something. One of the only things, mm -hmm. other than a beautiful portrait of my grandfather, my father's father, Najib Elias Halabi, mm -hmm. my father was junior, um, that's, that hung in our dining room of this, um, he, he looked tall, but then any portrait can, can do that <laughs> too, but this dark, handsome, extraordinary face that to this day, no one in my family knows what happened to that portrait, which hmm. really upsets me because I, it it, um, it mesmerized me. Um, but aside from that portrait and the fact that there were relatives, and I'm suspecting there were relatives in Brooklyn, um, in New, here in New York, who um, used to receive from uh, Syria or Lebanon on an annual basis. Um, something we call gamaradin, which is an apricot paste. Mm. It's very typical of, of the Arab world. It's something that's used in particular around the time of Ramadan by uh, Muslims to break the fast. It, 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 it is converted into a juice, um, mm. an apricot juice. And that used to arrive, and I used to make off with this and <laughs> just chew it. And, and to this day, I serve it. Uh, um, to my even my children in Jordan in a way that no one else does, which is as a paste to chew on and hmm. enjoy rather than as <laughs> the drink. Those are the those were really the only um, signs of of my Arab mm -hmm. heritage. My father's um, uh, because his father had died when he was very young. Um, his uh, brothers were not. Uh, his uncles were not, um, uh, pr I guess they must have passed away as well, maybe at young ages. One member of the family I met was my um, great uncle Camille, and for whom I, my mother wanted to name me Camille hmm. um, after him. It's pretty Because nice. he was the one um, member of my father's family that she felt, well, she knew and, and really, um, had great affection for. He mm -hmm. had an apartment in New York, and he spent his time between Colombia and New York, and that's a whole other story, mm -hmm. one of the, my favorite stories of my family. Mm -hmm. um, and even before I knew the extraordinary story of what he did, um, he, we met him once in New York. So he was the only male member of my father's family I ever knew. Mm -hmm. And he, I just remember vaguely, I was quite young, but just being in a, an apartment that I'm guessing was full of Arabia in, in hmm. because he and his brothers had brought artifacts from the Arab world as, as the story was told me and sold them when they arrived in the new world in the United States and that's how they started out. That, that was you know, the entrepreneurial uh, spirit of trade, if you will, mm -hmm. um, not uh, unusual for Syrians and Lebanese. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, he was the one other um, c connection, again, to that, to that heritage.